not going to dissect anything else? Uh, you'll just finish dissecting the rabbit and looking at the cat as well, of course, and then uh, taking a quiz. Mm. Will we be quizzed on exactly everything we're looking at on these? All the muscles on everything. So from shark to bunny and cat. See how that edge just lifts right up there? And so that's what you want to do and take either a blunt probe or a finger or something and work underneath it so that you can see the extent of a trapezius. And also we were we were wondering for the epactor um um, Rector spinae. Is it underneath? Is he, is this? It is, yeah. All right. Oh, you've done a nice job right in here too. And that uh, I can feel the scapula there. I can feel the scapula there. That feels like rhomboids right here coming back to the scapula. That looks good. Now for rector spinae, what I like to do is steal your seat, first of all. Back breaks after leaning over everybody's cats for a couple of hours. What I like to do is cut a little window right in here. So the latissimus dorsi is this big blocks of muscle running all the way along. And so this is homologous to the epaxial muscles, so the muscles that are running along the back of the shark. Ooh, it's all hairy. You see those big blocks of muscle under there. So, erector spinae extends the spine. I don't want to come up without ripping muscle. for my finesse when it comes to dissection. So yeah, rector spinae group running all the way along here. That's the back strap on the deer, the filet mignon on the uh, steak if you're a carnivore. And uh, that extends the back. So what's the difference between the um, rector spinae and then the, um, the costals? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. Like the intercostals or yeah, just completely isn't, different isn't, muscles? Isn't um, inside the intercostal the whole entire muscle that runs again? Uh, no, the intercostals are in between the ribs. Oh, I'm sorry. So intercostal, costal means rib. And so there's the uh, external intercostals right there between each rib. And what was, I'm sorry, what was the back muscle again? Uh, rector spinae group. Okay, I'm sorry. And that's going to be under yeah. back seals. Okay, okay, you just want us to know the group. Okay. That would be external intercostals. Uh, where that fat is, I can feel a rib there. That would be external intercostal. And the external intercostals are the equivalent of external oblique. 
It's the same basic muscle, same basic fibers, but there's ribs grown in between. And same thing if you if you were cut through that really thin layer and got to the internal intercostals, do the same thing as the internal obliques. Now, are the internal intercostal and the external intercostal, are the fibers arranged in the same direction or opposite, are they opposite direction? Opposite direction. So external intercostals raise the rib cage and expand it for breathing in. Internal intercostals squeeze the rib cage for blowing air out. Now, actually, maybe we should maybe we should work right up here since we started this little opening. Because um, we need to look at your obliques. Got it? Oh, did you start it? Looks like you didn't work out yet. You may be able to find them right here. Here's the rhomboid group. It is, yeah, right above the scapula, rhomboids. Bunny's um, abdominal muscles are so thin. It's really hard to, to figure out where one is. They don't have flying rabbits as well in this lab manual. I was like disappointed because it's all cats. You know, that is the uh, bias. I mean, people have been using cats for years in, yeah, I know. Uh, in these classes, and rabbits are a fairly new thing. And mm -hmm. really, there really isn't as much information. And their muscles are smaller and a little more delicate. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons they use cats. And this is more red because more oxygen goes to it because it's diffused uh, more, right? Um, yeah, that's probably so. Yeah, it had a lot more blood supply, so it has that kind of reddish look to it. Oh boy. <laughs>